Hey guys, Spirit of the Lie here. In this video, I want to speculate about what appears to be an upcoming expansion for Age of Empires 2. There's nothing officially announced at this point, but there's some pretty good evidence that something is on the way. Yeshua E11 was the first I saw posting on the official forums where they grabbed a screenshot from Steam database. About three weeks ago, there was some downloadable content uploaded to Steam behind the scenes under the codename Porto, as well as over 20 new achievements added that are presently locked. Something similar happened prior to the release of both Lords of the West and Dawn of the Dukes, and in those cases, the codenames gave a little hint about the civilizations to come, though that hasn't always been the case. The recent Age of Empires 3 Mexico DLC, for example, was codenamed Bucharest, which doesn't have an obvious connection with Mexico, though the Lords of the West codename was Palermo, which was a pretty good hint that Sicily was an upcoming Civ. Similarly, the Dawn of the Dukes codename was Prague, which also signaled Bohemia was going to be part of that DLC. In this video, I want to go through my guesses for the next civilizations, but first I want to quickly address a feeling that I'm sure is out there, which is that we already have enough civilizations. There's already 39, so why would we possibly need any more? It's a fair question, but personally I think there's a few good arguments for the continued slow trickle of DLCs that we've been getting. First, I think they're important for Microsoft to justify running the servers and keep the developers on staff. While the return on investment for developer time working on DLCs is probably insanely good, that money has to cover lots of other things that keep the game running. Also, for the player base, it can help keep things fresh. Dawn of the Dukes especially was received very well, and the devs have gotten much better at releasing civilizations in a balanced state at launch. Another important thing that new DLC does is make a very public statement that the game is thriving. It puts Age of Empires 2 back in the news and makes players much more confident in getting invested for the long run. It can be a self-fulfilling prophecy when a game loses developer support, and there's a big difference in perception between slowly releasing patches versus actually putting out new content to keep the game moving forward every year. Patches like what we got yesterday that fix stability, bugs, and tweak the UI just don't make headlines in the same way. And finally, maybe the most important reason we need more civilizations is so the Civ selection screen doesn't have an awkward space in the corner. If the pattern continues and it's another two Civs in the next DLC, that doesn't really fix things as 41 is a prime number. At this rate, it'll be three expansions until we can have a very satisfying and completely filled screen. So that's my reasoning, at least, for why I think new content is overall good for the game, even as the list of civilizations keeps getting larger than I'm sure anyone could have imagined, say, 10 years ago. So that said, what are the likely upcoming civilizations? When I speculated on the last DLC, that actually turned out pretty well. Based on the title Dawn of the Dukes, my top guesses were Poland and Bohemia, which ended up being correct, though last time I at least had a title to work with, so this time involves a little more legwork. I'm going to assume again that they're doing two new civilizations. None of this is confirmed and I have no inside info, but that does seem to be the pattern. To piece things together, let's start with what kind of civilizations the game is short on. I counted up the number of civs with different classifications based on the tech tree description, keeping in mind civilizations can be classified in either one or two groups at the same time. At the moment, we have 11 infantry, 11 cavalry, 7 naval, 6 archer, 5 monk, 5 gunpowder, 3 siege, 2 camel, 2 cavalry archer, 2 defensive, and 2 elephant civilizations. Yes, 4 civilizations have elephants, but only 2 are actually classified that way. Most recently though, we've had a lot of emphasis on cavalry. Of the last 8 civilizations released for Definitive Edition, we have 2 infantry, 2 monk, 1 cavalry archer, 1 gunpowder, and 6 categorized with cavalry as either a primary or secondary focus. Call it gambler's fallacy, but I really think we're due for an archer sieve, and maybe either a camel or siege one as well. Archers are also the only type of unit we have that currently doesn't have a way to increase its speed, so I'm really feeling that as a sieve bonus will come sooner or later. A faster archer gorilla raiding style sieve would be something we haven't seen recently, and would be fun to micro, though you'd have to balance the sieve in other ways. On the other hand, if they want another camel sieve, I think they pretty much have to look to Africa. Everywhere to the east of that that has camels is pretty well covered by existing civilizations. The exception is Australia, which interestingly has the largest feral camel population in the world at the moment, though they were introduced there in the early 1800s, so I wouldn't hold out hope for an Australian camel civilization in AoE 2. Keeping all of this in mind, let's go back to the one clue we have, the codename Porto. Again, this could mean nothing, but we'll entertain it as a clue and see if it leads anywhere. The most famous Porto is, of course, the city Porto in Portugal. We already have Portugal in the game, of course, so initially that feels like a dead end. If we look at Wikipedia with anything with Porto in the name, there's a lot of cities in Brazil, though Brazil is pretty firmly outside the AOE2 timeline. 
Considering the Mexico DLC was called Bucharest, it kind of feels like they might just be picking random city names in Europe. But hear me out. One we see on the list is Porto Novo, the capital of Benin. Now, Benin is an African country named after a kingdom that existed in the Middle Ages. Being easy to pronounce immediately gives it some bonus points, and while on a map it doesn't appear very large, that's a bit of a trick of projection. Modern day Benin adjusting for latitude is actually larger than Portugal and Denmark, for instance. Though that's not to conflate the modern country Benin with the medieval kingdom Benin, it's just to say that things in Africa are larger than they appear. The Benin kingdom's first European contact was with Portugal, so this could even be a Portugal contact expansion theme. They did cover that in a campaign for Francisco de Almeida, but there's no reason they can't make that a DLC theme as well. I noticed under the Benin Kingdom's notable figures on their Wikipedia page, there's a Queen Edia, who is a famous warrior with mystical powers in the early 1500s, who's credited as a big part of her son's victories on the battlefield. My campaign content spider senses are definitely tingling when I read this. They could cover first her husband's and then her son's major battles, with mysticism and superstition mixed into the story. 100% I can see this as a campaign or at least a standalone mission and add some diversity to the DLC artwork as they've been making a big effort to do on the last few expansions. There's a few very famous ivory portraits of her as well. And while I wasn't initially sold on the Porto hint, there is a little more in Benin's favor than I initially expected. The capital city of the Benin Kingdom also has some famous walls and I could see an archer and defensive sieve really playing off of this. That said, the flag may not make it into the game for a couple of reasons. They'd have to be a little creative in that department. If they're going for a second African civilization, I think Zimbabwe would be another option with a window between the early 1200s and mid 1400s. The timeline of Age of Empires is a little inconsistent with everything from Huns and Goths who were peaking around 4 to 500, but then also including Aztecs who existed from around 1300 to 1500. Ghana, Swahili, or Songhai empires could also be options, and all fit within that established time period. One of the original Age of Kings and Age of Conquerors developers, Sandy Peterson, actually said they had originally thought about doing an African expansion, and named four of the civilizations they considered. What we actually thought of doing was instead of doing an, a generic expansion that went a bunch of stuff, was going sub-Saharan and doing just African civs. Ghana, Zimbabwe, uh, Mali, in, in Ethiopia is that here's our four sieves that is sub-Saharan Africa. The fact he mentions Ghana and Zimbabwe in addition to the two we already have makes me feel like the chances of at least one of those is quite high. The Hausa were also added to Age of Empires 3 and were certainly early enough to catch the tail end of AOE2's timeline. The main point here is that there's a ton of choice within Africa and sneaking in a camel or archer civilization from that list would be very doable. That's not to say though the expansion has to be African civilizations, and the name Porto could just be a random choice. Maybe the name is just to throw everyone off, and all it proves is we should look everywhere except Portugal and Africa. Outside of that continent, I still think there's potential in splitting either Slavs or Indians into more than one civilization. Both were introduced in the Forgotten Empires expansion, which had the intention of wrapping up missing civs and not necessarily kicking off the addition of 20 more. I'm sure they would have been a bit more specific in the naming if they'd known how many more civs they were planning to add later. For that reason, the devs could understandably backpedal and give one of those civs a more specialized name while adding a second civilization from the region as a new one. If they want to add a brand new one though, looking at a list of great medieval powers, probably the most obvious choice if we take politics out of it is the Tibetan Empire. Considering Hearts of Iron is banned in China for showing Tibet, among other regions, as being independent, I don't think the higher ups at Microsoft would risk greenlighting that choice as a sieve. I'm also in the camp of thinking we're probably never going to get a native North American civilization. To do it properly, you need an Age of Empires 4 mindset of not just a giant shared tech tree, but a pretty radical overhaul to building and farming mechanics, etc. One of the inviting things about Age of Empires 2 for players is you can get a random civilization and not have to learn the core mechanics from scratch. Then again, we come back to the Huns, who weren't exactly known for farming and building castles either. Since Huns are in the game, you can pretty much make any civilization work, and maybe we will see the Haudenosaunee in AoE 2 after all. I am quite confident though the next civilization is going to avoid Europe. The last two DLCs both featured only European civilizations, so I think Armenia or Georgia will have to hold off for now, but maybe in 2023. Especially Georgians and some other Central European civilization like the Swiss or Venetians wouldn't be surprising at some point if they keep slowly releasing DLC. In fact, maybe the larger difficulty with continuing DLCs isn't finding good empires, but in coming up with original Civ bonuses. 
There's only so many variations, though Krakenmeister with his Create a Civ website has managed to come up with a lot of novel ones, so I'm not as worried about that as I otherwise would have been. The devs have shown multiple times they're willing to borrow from other games in the franchise and are comfortable coming up with new creative mechanics, which we've seen in all the recent DLCs. So to commit to a final prediction, I'm really feeling two African civilizations are coming. As tempting as it is to guess Benin with a campaign around Queen Edia, I think they're going to go for a South African Civ, so I'm going to say Zimbabwe with a focus on archers and defenses. The other I'm calling is a Camel and Siege Civ, and I'm going to say it's Ghana, since they were famous for their camel caravans crossing the Sahara Desert. I look forward to being hilariously wrong in both guesses. Let me know if there's a civilization you think they should include that I forgot to mention. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.